Hello, guys. Listen, welcome to the show. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Canadian real estate bubble and why Canada is actually like Bomberman in the economy. It's You ever play that old game, Bomberman? It used to be a fun game. Uh, the little guy would run around and he would blow up. Boom. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, awful fun game. I think it was by Atari or one of these big, uh, it might have been Nintendo. Oh, wait, I think it was Nintendo. Uh, they had the first Bomberman game. So we're going to talk about why the Canadian economy is like that. It's, it's getting ready to just disintegrate and how it could affect the American economy. And then we're going to take a look at food prices back in 1968. And the reason why is, is because the dollar, our dollar, has lost 90 uh, 7%, roughly around that area, 96, 97% of its purchasing power. And we're going to do a little bit of nostalgia in this show and talk about food prices back in 1968. So it should be an interesting show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the show, guys. I'm glad to have you here. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about, well, first we're going to open the charts and take a look at this. Okay? What we're looking at here is today's news. And it says the Canadian housing market is amongst the world's weakest as price growth hits. It says a Canadian housing crash worse than the United States housing crash. And you can just see by these articles, a real estate housing bubble is in Canada in Seeking Alpha here, this article. Uh, the 2018 Canadian real estate crash, how's the bubble began to burst? Okay. Toronto housing crash, 15 factors that could send Toronto something, send Toronto into the whatever, oblivion. I'm going to tell you why this is so bad, guys. The reason why this is so bad for years, honest to God, the price of Canadian homes, uh, especially in areas like Vancouver, Toronto, uh, uh, seriously, the price of homes, it's unbelievable around the Toronto region, specifically, how high, what you have to pay for a decent home. Some of these homes are homes that other places would sell for $20,000, $30,000. But because they're in around Toronto, they sell for a million or more. Now, what's happened is, is these people that own these houses, before the bubble blew up, their houses were worth 30000 40000 First thing you know, they find themselves holding over a million dollars in housing, house equity. Well, the banks know this. They say, do you own your own home? The guy says, yeah. And the bank says, well, we'll extend you a line of credit. For like five hundred thousand dollars. So what's happened is on this line of credit that these people have taken out, when interest rates were down rock bottom in the United States, interest rates were also rock bottom here in Canada, and people could buy an awful lot of stuff with a five hundred thousand dollar line of credit. So they lived the good life, right? But now what's happened is, is this housing bubble here in Canada is ready to pop. In fact, it is starting to pop right now. It's starting to pop, and it's just like Bomberman. That's what the real estate market here in Canada is like. So essentially, what's happened is, is, is these banks have all extended these lines of credit, and they have made tremendous amount of money because when they extend a person a line of credit, and those people go out and buy things with that line of credit, the bank then is owed, owed the money back that they've spent. And when they spend that money, the bank basically – didn't create that money. That money, it just pops into existence when they go out. Say they get that line of credit and they run out and they buy themselves a new car, for instance. Well, that money they just bought the car with just sprung into existence from nothing, from thin air on that line of credit. But that money now goes on that bank's uh, books as a credit to the bank. So in other words, that money that they spent on that car now becomes capital for the bank that they can that they can count as and this is why these banks have made massive record profits here in Canada these banks banks have been pumped up 
So basically, the real estate bubble has pumped up a banking bubble. It's like a banking bubble, essentially. The banks are like full of fat, full of capital right now from all of these loans that they've made out. Now, everything's well and fine and good for these banks and for everybody else as long as these houses maintain their value. If this real estate bubble pops, then this is going to be terribly bad. And also here in Canada, there's another factor involved. They have the mortgages work different here in Canada. It's a, they're mostly set on a five-year balloon payment or whatever it's called. And this accentuates the problem, makes it even worse. So we got this going on here in Canada. If these, this all pops and the real estate loses value, an awful lot of these loans that the bank did during good times are going to become what's called non-performing loans. The same thing happened to the Italian banking system, but the Italian banking system was was able to be bailed out by the Italian government, but they've kept it together. They've Basically, they've held it together. Uh, they're basically Italy's broke at this point. There's so many non-performing loans in Italy at this point that the banking system is in huge, huge trouble. But they've been bailed out, and they're going through that bailout money now. The banks are whole, Italy's holding together by going through the bailout money, but Italy can't do it again. It's a one-trick pony. Italy can't extend these loans out to the banks again. They're, they've reached their limit of how much money that they can. And now Italy's putting in a new budget this year that's going to defy the EU. And so we got that going on over in Italy. And I didn't really want to get into talking about Italy, but Canada could be facing a situation that's just as bad, if not worse, than Italy very, very soon. So we got this disintegration in Canada. But now let's take a look at the cost of living back in 1968. I mean, you guys got to see this, you know. And this just goes to show you. And if you guys are like me, I can remember these prices. I can remember Piggly Wiggly stores down in Florida. And these prices were almost identical because uh, my dad, just down the street from where I used to live in Florida, we used to live in a, uh, near Miami. And there's a little grocery store, Piggly Wiggly, down near uh, near where I used to live. And this is what the prices used to be. Just take a look at some of these. Uh, two cans of pint, Dole's pineapple juice. Now, we're not talking no-name brand or something like that. We're talking Dole, 19 cents. And they were used to be big cans back then. See, they've shrunk everything now. Those cans probably back then were probably two-liter size cans of pineapple juice. Two for 19 cents. Shrimp, 10 cents. That's 10 cents for shrimp. And it probably was a whole pound of shrimp for 10 cents. Um, Phillips pork and beans, three cans for 10 cents. So three cents, roughly 3.3 .3 cents a can. Ketchup, seven cents for a big bottle of ketchup. Tomato juice, four cents. Grapefruit juice, two for nine cents. It just, doesn't it just make you sick? how they've slowly eroded the purchasing power of our dollars. Honest to God, let's take a look at another one from this store here. Um, ham, five pound, five pounds of ham, $3.98. Of course, that's, that's quite a little bit of money, but that's five pounds. Club steak, 95 cents a pound. Now you can bet your boots that these were the best of steaks. 95 cents for club steak. Uh, turkeys, 35 cents a pound. These prices don't appear to be 1968 prices. This is more like the prices was in the 70s or 80s here than this one. It doesn't post the date of this flyer. Uh, no, wait, 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 it might. Uh, price is effective until December 18th through December 24th. doesn't say the year, though. They're, they are assuming you know the year. <laughs> I don't know what year it is, but I'm going to guess by looking at these prices. I remember prices very similar to this. Uh, eight pound bag of grapefruits, 49 cents. This is probably somewhere in the, in the mid 70s, this one here. Uh, the prices are a little bit higher than the last flyer. Uh, so we see the effect of inflation creeping in already by the 70s and 80s. These prices are going up, up, up to what they are today. But when we look at these prices, see, what they're doing to us 
is similar to when what I heard is you can actually take frogs and they cook frogs, you know, and they put them in the water at normal temperature and they slowly boil them. And the frogs don't jump out because the temperature is rising so slowly in the water that they're in there and they're thinking to themselves, oh, I'm having a lovely bath. And boy, does this warm water feel nice. A little bit warmer. Oh, it's starting to tingle. It feels so nice. You know, the frog. And he's laying there in that warm water as it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. After a while, I mean, he's just so sedated by the, he just falls asleep. And, and next thing you know, the water's boiling. He's done. He's cooked. They're cooking us. <laughs> They're cooking us. And the next thing you know, our dollar's going to be totally worthless. Basically, this is the way it's working. Uh, so listen, this has been a little bit of update on a couple things that's going on. Thank you guys for listening to this episode, and stay tuned. I'll probably have a nice episode tomorrow afternoon on something or another. Uh, we're going to take a look through and see if we can spot some trends. Uh, I'm going to do some research tonight. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye, guys.